and welcome back to The Lockup, presented by Comics Remixed, Episode 9. Nueve. Please find that f***ing sound. I'll try, man. I'll try. As always, I'm your host, Big Brian Adams. Joining me, I sit you in the face of my finger. <laughs> really? it's, it's a wrestling podcast, not a We're getting physical really. just talking and I'm like, ah. Poke me in the f***ing face with his finger. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you need to clarify that. It's figured. Are you going to introduce yourself? Oh, sh- sorry. Um, oh, dude, I f- brain farted. I forgot who I was for a second. <laughs> wow. I mean, I, I know there's been times where I've stumbled over my own name, but I don't think I've ever forgotten my own name. It's because you've been using all them aliases on Facebook. Yeah. You're forgetting who you are. Yeah. You know, it's funny that you say that because I was uh, listening to the very first ever video comics remixed episode which was number five when you were wade wilson dude not even that no i introduced myself under my musician name that lasted like two episodes yeah so anyways junior ruiz he's got a conflict of he's got a personal identity Man, crisis I'm moon knight over here i like 50 identities mick foley and joining us again this week chris book up the southern hip with the john deere hat the book the book the book Probably be quiet most of this episode, unless we're talking about Matt Hardy. I don't think you got nothing to say. Yeah, I'm pretty much out. Yeah, you'll you'll, here. you'll be like the John. We used to have Pat for all on episodes, and he wouldn't say. Shit. As a matter of fact, if you go back and you listen to our Mighty Morphin Power Rangers episode, that is the only episode that he like, did not shut. I bust his balls hard right in the beginning about how we had recorded three episodes prior, and Johnny P. All night thing. Johnny Freeze sat there and didn't say shit for the first three. And then we got the Power Rangers, and he would not shut the f*** up. Like, it was just his show. Right. Which, hey, we let the boy run with it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, biggest wrestling news for this week, really, is the passing of Dusty Rhodes. Yeah, that um, hurt. Dusty Rhodes, you know, is an icon of the industry, the American dream. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a lot of fond memories from my childhood of his black outfits with the yellow polka dots and Mabel. You can, Yeah. Wasn't you, that her name? No, um... It was, uh... What was Sapphire. Name? Really? Yes, it was Sapphire. Why did I think it was Mabel? I don't know. Huh. All right. Um, if you yeah, say it's you, Sapphire, I'll... You can't I'll be a wrestling fan at all and not know who Dusty Rhodes was. You know, Dusty Rhodes is one of the true pioneers who, who paved the way, not only for the superstars we have now, but the way a lot of the, the, the programming is um, brought to you and viewed by the audience, you know, uh, Dusty was a promo king, you know, there's, there's only like your Mount Rushmore of promos, promo guy, top promo guys, Dusty belong, he has to be one out of the four up there, hand, without a doubt. He's in the upper echelon. Yeah, there's, I, there's, there's very few who can come close to touching what Dusty did on the mic, you know, it sucks, you know, of course, whenever a wrestler passes, especially a well-known wrestler, it, it's always, uh, pretty hard to take um i as a fan you know like i've mentioned a couple of episodes ago there was only two wrestlers who've ever passed away that actually brought me to tears it was eddie guerrero and uh macho man um i was almost there with dusty no warrior oh uh, warrior yeah but that was for a different you know i i think that brought me to tears in the sense of how the circumstances right. all played out um, didn't bring you to t- really man you're gonna go there <laughs> I'd throw it out there, man. You know, it was the anniversary of that this week. Was it? Yeah. Wow. Um, but going back to the Dusty Roads, it's, you know, everybody remembers the pork and beans promo. You know, um, everybody remembers his legendary feud with Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, uh, most notably the Four Horsemen, the, the angle where uh, they broke his leg. Remember that? Um, I remember him in an interview saying that he had to call home and tell, you know, Cody that it wasn't, it was all good, you know? So. I mean, it's just a lot of stuff that Dusty is responsible for. But I think one of the biggest impacts that his passing is going to have that hopefully we don't notice for um, would be, and I don't mean that in a negative way, would be um, the NXT talent. Because he was very, very heavy in helping the NXT guys with their promos and stuff. So hopefully uh, none of those NXT guys took him for granted. Yeah, you know, when I, I feel like coming up in the business, when you have someone like that around, like as a mentor, you've got to, you know, soak in everything. Oh, and yeah, most definitely. Way more than, you know, anything Hugh Morris would give you. Like, I, 
honestly still to this day don't understand how that guy was the trainer for talent. Like, I don't think Hugh Morris was that great of a wrestler when he was wrestling. Oh, well, you remember they play a character, so for all we know, he he knew so he he knew a lot. Yeah, we don't know that. From what you hear, he was a most of us are. Yeah, that's true. But so yeah, Dusty uh, has left us what, Thursday morning, last Thursday. Mm-hmm. So rest in peace, Dream. June 11, twenty fifteen. Um, last I read, they said the cause of death uh, was like he stum- he suffered a fall in his home. And it just got uh, complications went from there. And he died in the hospital the next morning. Yeah, that sucks, man. Plus two big stars on Thursday. I mean, I know the other one doesn't have to do with wrestling. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Clement DeMuth, Christopher Lee. Man. You know, he does some pretty, some pretty epic singing with death metal bands. Dude, I've seen that. They're actually not that bad. Either. Yeah. Christopher Lee, man, you'd be surprised. <laughs> you look like shocked. I, I kind of am, yeah. Yeah, see, now that, that's in my wheelhouse. The Tyrese, <laughs> who knows about that? <laughs> <laughs> I want to hey, talk man. about like some Slayer. And <laughs> I'm, I'm your man. Tyrese, no, not at all. But yeah, it's you sad. Can't play Slayer um, for the ladies as a teenager and hope to get laid, man. Hey, man. You know I what? I guess it just depends on the kind it, of. It totally does. Moving on. Uh, I was kind of wondering if when they do the uh, tribute to Dusty tonight on Raw, if. Like I told you earlier, will Cody come out as Cody? Right. Or will he keep perpetrating the, the will Stardust? He, it's kind of curious. I mean, since it's a more serious thing, I feel like in these moments and in light of these losses, WWE tends to be a little more, uh, you know what they I think? They like class it up for the evening, you know what, what I mean? What I think they'll do, you know, Triple H or somebody of that power ranking will come out in the middle of the ring. Um, with all this Raw and SmackDown and NXT talent at the top of the ramp like usual, except Goldust and Cody will probably be front and center. And, you know, they'll do the, the tolling of the bells mm-hmm. and stuff like that, and then they'll just focus. They won't obviously call him Cody or anything, but I'm sure he'd just be standing out there as Cody, you know, but he won't say a word or anything like that, you know. Do you think he will stand out there as Cody? Yeah, I believe he will. Or, you know, if he does come out dressed as Stardust, he, he may look like Stardust, but he won't be in character. You know what I'm saying? And I, I'm sure the announcers will probably, uh, you know, obviously reference that he's their son, or that he's a dusty son. I would assume so. Um, they didn't. Yeah, that would be, that'd be weird if they didn't. Apparently, uh, in other news, Jerry Lawler is saying that SmackDown might go live. Yeah, that's uh, that's been a rumor floating, floating <clears throat> around lately. Um, and they said that uh, they might actually take it off the of Sci-Fi Channel and uh, USA might pick it up. So USA would host both Raw and SmackDown. Like, that show needs to be live. We've said this before. It really does because I, I feel that um, I've always wanted to watch Raw more than SmackDown, partially because well, like, I don't know what's going to happen. There's no reason to watch years. SmackDown when Tuesday or Wednesday you could go online. And that's exactly and what I was know what's going to happen. Yeah, that's exactly what I was getting to. So, so that, I mean, that's what's the, the reason point? I don't feel like, oh man, I got to watch SmackDown because if I miss it, I've got to wait till they somebody posts the results. Well, apparently he purchased the Batmobile recently. Oh, he's West been at that. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he got it from, um, I believe he got it from Mark Raku, the guy that we went down to Indiana to interview at his convention. Which you could check out a video of that. Isn't there a video of that? Yeah, you can check out the video uh, on our YouTube page. That's also the, uh, that was the infamous weekend that we had Mark Wade on our show twice. And uh, I thought, like, he was going to punch David in the face. That would have been awesome. That would have been the moment. That, that would have been awesome. But, Those guys had a really good... Uh, Rapport going back and forth during that little episode. I uh, I, I like that, you know, off topic really quick with the wrestling. I, I enjoyed that weekend, you know, while David was interviewing Mark about the Batmobiles and how he makes them and stuff. If you pay attention to that video while he's talking to him, I'm in the background sitting in the Batmobiles and so just pushing like all types of buttons, <laughs> like making the sirens go off. It was fun. I like. Think it's not real shoot a missile through the side of it. Well, the, they had three Batmobiles on display. One was just like the uh, like the basic version, just for the look. One was just, like, the, the body, and then the third one was, like, the final deluxe version with all the bells and whistles, and it literally had a flamethrower on the back, like, to, for the engine, so they wouldn't let you push the button because it burned the wall down. Which Batman, or Batmobile? 66. Style? 66? Batman yeah. West. The pimp mobile. I love that car. Yeah. I always said if I won the lotto, that's one of the vehicles I'm buying. Uh, Finn Balor. Bella. We all know I, I don't I don't know if you've seen any NXT dude. This guy does some of the 
most spectacular theatrical ring entrances ever. He puts he like all this makeup on, and it's like crazy. And he paints himself a, a mix of Venom and Carnage. Oh yeah. Yeah, and he's got like these long predator dreads that he puts on like a head piece, and he comes out and like he comes out to like his music, and it's like some classical music, but like with a fast tempo. Like, I, I, what would you just? I wouldn't. I don't know if I call it classical. What would you call it? I would call it symphonic metal. Yeah, something like that. You know, and then he always comes out and like he, like I said, he comes down to the aisle to the music. You know, um, back when he was uh, Prince Devitt in the independent scene, he had a, he would paint himself as Carnage. He would paint himself as Venom. But now that he can't, you know, do the copyright, it's an amalgam of both. And they now they're just calling him the Demon. And he's got like the, his chest from like shoulder to shoulder is like painted like teeth, like Venom's teeth, and the other half is like up here. So when you look at him, it looks like it's just a big mouth on him. It's it's crazy. It's awesome. When we yeah. finish, dude, I'll I'll pull it up and I'll show it to you. It's it's. It's sick. I just put it's, it on. It's awesome. Nice, well. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Put it out. Put it on, man. Come but on, uh, man. dude, he's he's awesome. He's he talks about uh, his next match with Kevin Owens. Another bad. Which yeah, uh, if, you, if you were dude putting out fruit snacks out of. That didn't come out my. Ass, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you were ever gonna get into wrestling again, and like I mean, you got to check out like he was saying ROH, or you got to check out NXT. Those are the two right now that are really doing it. Yeah, yeah if you've got a good cable company and they actually carry Destination XL. Um, XL or America? Um, Destination I, America. America. I think Des- it for, man. Destination XL is the fat guy store. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I was trying to find my, my remote to put that on. I know where it is, so I'm just going to show it afterwards. Um, it's the TV remote. I don't know where it is. I'd have to switch inputs, but a lot's not important. But, uh, so he's going to be, apparently he's going to be coming to the main roster, like I was talking about earlier, and he's going to be challenging Kevin Owens for the NXT Championship, I guess, on a Raw or SmackDown, or possibly an upcoming pay-per-view. Really? So that's not going to be on a takeover? No, it says, uh, let's see, they're he's wrestling. He's contender for that belt right now. It says, uh, he had his last, he had his last match in the Sumo Arena, which is where... NXT is going to be in, t- in Tokyo. Yeah. Oh, he's wrestling Kevin Owens. In, in July 4th. In For the title in Tokyo. Yeah. Okay, so it's going to be an NXT show. Yeah, that's why it threw me off. Okay, like, right on. What are you talking about? So I was, watching, uh, I was watching this week's NXT yesterday, if not the day before, mm-hmm. and they were showing uh, the commercial for it. You know, and uh, the commercial was really, really cool. You remember how they were doing the Triple H uh sting vignettes where like triple h would talk and like it would morph and you'd see like sting's face yeah yeah it was something similar so as finn balor was talking it would morph and you could see him with all the makeup really quick with all crazy and then go back to being regular <sighs> all right i see you pulling it up just go that's interesting what are we talking no about? I, I didn't bring it up no i'm just i'm, I I'm know, still skimming I see, I see okay so my talking. confusion with the main roster is it's got him quoted as saying it's a huge match just even the significance of the building it's in the sumo arena it's the arena i had my last match in it's really only 14 months later, and I'm returning with WWE on the main roster to challenge Kevin Owens for the NXT title. So, Well, they're talking about bringing him up, but ain't the regular Raw and SmackDown crew will be there as well. It's not just NXT going. Right, right. That might be how he meant it. So, uh, I mean, that's, that'll be a big match, dude, and uh, I, yeah. I think that gives and some... And it, it uh, is going to air on, NXT, on, on the network. Yeah, I think so. that gives some credibility to what you were saying, that you feel like t- tonight, or I'm sorry, Sunday... Which, since this will be on Monday. I hate that we do this. It's, oh it gets God. confusing. It's the, it's the time warp thing, the paradox. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the pay-per-view, which is tonight, because we're recording now, but you'll be listening to this Monday after it's already happened, you believe that John Cena is going to drop again to Kevin Owens, only to eventually drop that U.S. title to Kevin Owens, with Kevin Owens dropping the NXT belt. I, I know what you're trying to say, but you just confused the shit out of me. To Finn Balor. Really? Yeah. You're confused? I think you said the same name twice. I'm not sure. No, no, no. I said that you have speculated that tonight, which will people listen to this, will actually be tomorrow. Cut that out, man. <laughs> I like doing that to him because it hurts his head. Anyway, you believe at Money in the Bank, which we haven't seen yet, but when people listen to this, they'll be able to look up the results of, that Kevin Owens will be Cena for the second time. Yes. Leading to another rematch. For Imagine the U.S. title. For the U.S. title. That Owens will pick up. Because he'll later, drop the belt right, to the NXT. Right, that's what I'm the saying. NXT belt belt. Right, you got it. Are you unconfused now? Yes. In related news from last week, 
we talked about with great excitement at the possibility of Brock Lesnar versus Stone Cold Steve Austin at yeah. WrestleMania. That would be sick. That would be super sick, man. And Austin, dude, like, uh, you can go up on YouTube, and I don't know if, the, will the video be up on YouTube? No. Oh, just, just the audio? Yeah. I don't even think the audio is on YouTube. Oh, really? Yeah, you have to go to, you go to podcast1.com, it's free. Just look for the episode and listen to it. There you go. Stone Cold interviewed Paul Heyman. Dude, great, great hour interview. Uh, at the end, they talked about the possibility of him facing Brock Lesnar. Full promo mode. Yeah, Steve, Steve well, you, got you into got, Stone Cold It's one Cold of those mode. things you got to see. Yeah. Because of the, the look in his eyes, the way he was staring Paul Heyman down, like you wanted to jump over the table and kill him. Mm-hmm. And then Stone Cold's been working back out again. Dude, dude he looks... Uh, he looks better now, I'd probably say, than he did back then. He definitely looks bigger, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he looks like he's hitting way too much. He long. looks like that he could he could take a match. Unlike Hulk Hogan, I guess, who's also been loving to or, or he's been petitioning, petitioning hard for a, another, another match. match. WrestleMania 32. Don't but no one care about that. The dude can't walk to the ring, man. How are you supposed to have a match? You know, you can't do the big boot. You can't do the leg drop. With it, that's your signature move. You know, it's like Stone Cold having a match and not being able to do the stunner. Yeah. Which only happened one time in his career, I believe, in WWE. As when he, a SummerSlam when he broke his neck, I guess Owen. So you think if Stone Cold is setting up for a comeback, you think there'll be a chance for a throwback match with him and The Rock at some point? Well, that would be a possibility, but what I'm about to tell you kind of just kills everything. Uh, Paul Heyman came out and said that there's zero chance of that match ever happening. Yeah, everybody knows Paul Heyman was. <clears throat> um, yeah, of course yeah, you're going to say, of, I mean, of course. how far are we from WrestleMania 30 well, next March? Heyman said on, a, on another podcast that there's no way that the, that the match would happen. Uh, he said that he did it just to with Stone Cold, um, and that Stone Cold cut a promo be- just because. Yeah. You know, that's but too that... Many, that's uh, too many variables. Yeah, I'm not buying it. Too many just because. Yeah, there is too many... Ju- I mean, I think it would be a phenomenal match. Uh, I'm not... I would like to see it, but with the way they've been playing up Res- Lesnar lately, like I said last week, I would f- hate for them to give this match and just scrub f- Stone Cold out. Yeah, but then at the same time, you don't want... You, with the, the way they're building Lesnar. Yeah, but at the same time, they can't scrub Lesnar out. Exactly. So it would have to be like a match. Like, well, like but, Austin said, uh, was Texas death match. Yeah, it, it can't be like Roman Reigns. Right. You well, know, it's not a crap match either, like whenever Brock Lesnar fought Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? They're saying, you know, they're, they're, they're reporting that WrestleMania 32, since McMahon is all about setting a, setting attendance records, and it's in the new stadium or whatever. They're trying to put a hundred thousand people in there, all hands on deck. It's about Triple H versus uh, The Rock. Uh, this rumor of Stone Cold Lesnar, um, and possibly Cena versus Hulk Hogan. Like anybody they can get, they want to crank. Like anything that's gonna get eyes to watch WrestleMania and get in those seats. You know, they're they're hyping this up to be like this huge, huge card. Cena and Hogan, that would be a pretty boring match, I would imagine. Yeah, you know... <sighs> Cena and Hogan? Yeah, Cena versus Hogan. Oh, yeah, that would be... Yeah. You would have to root for Cena. <sighs> like Just because yeah. you know you'd be doing a disservice to yourself by rooting for Hogan. Whether you're a fan or not, dude, the facts are facts. The guy cannot walk to the... Yeah, he's, he's, he's done. Go. Last year's WrestleMania, when he came out to, with the NWO to help Sting, it was proof right there that his time has come. It took him a while to get there. You know, it's, he's, no, he's done. And speaking of Hogan, there's this alleged, you know, social media war between him and CM Punk, which, I like, really, when I think war, you think back and forth. At this point, as far to my knowledge, it's one friggin' tweet. Um, it all started with the uh, Blackhawks. Chicago Black Hawks. Hawks. Um, <laughs> one away, baby. He's, uh, they was down there at the finals when they were in, what, Tampa? Yeah. The Tampa Lightning, right? Yeah. And pretty much, you know, Hogan said that Chicago didn't have all of a chance because, you know, Tampa was going to kick the Tampa the Lightning was going to strike. And then and then John Connor was a great coach, but it wasn't. He mispronounced the guy's name. It's John Cooper is the coach of the Tampa Lightning. I don't think John Connor probably would be a bad dude. Like he. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Eliminate and terminate him. He, uh, well, he pretty much pulled like a. a wrestling promo really if you've seen the video footage yeah um, well that's what Hogan does yeah that's what he does it's like dude he screwed up Wrestlemania 30 you remember they're in the Superdome and uh yeah yeah the totally Silver Dome the Silverdome or, Silver or, or what yeah he couldn't get it right so basically he 
claims to be a super fan of the Lightning, but didn't know the coach's name and got the name of the best player wrong. And uh, CM Punk called him out on it and then said he was a piece of garbage. <laughs> That's not all he said. He told him to shut the f- up or I'll wreck you or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, Sam Punk's looking real badass. Yeah, I mean, granted, it's Hulk Hogan, but still, Hulk Hogan's like 200 years old. Right? Do you have to legitimately, like, how do you make yourself look like a bad, threatening an old man? Yeah. But not I mean, he, like, go, one of us going to Walmart and trying to start a fight with a door to you. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Walmart. F*** <laughs> you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's what he told me. He's like, shut the f*** up or I'll wreck you. He, he should change his name to CM because he's just a jag. Like, it, and it really sucks, man, because as much as I... I disliked him and that whole, like, you know, because, like, uh, well, you know, I, I was, you know, too, I was pothead. I don't get down with that straight edge bullshit to act like you're so superior and act like such a f- It just doesn't, doesn't wash with me at all. You know what one of my favorite CM Punk moments was in wrestling? Whenever yeah. Jericho held him on, on the ground and was pouring alcohol in his mouth and shit. And oh, you know, I remember that feud. Were you watching? No. They had a feud and they did it where, um... Jericho was, you know, happy to be back. And this is like when Punk was the heel champion. Uh Uh-huh. And, you know, Jericho was happy to be back and everything. And Punk was like, well, dude, you're not, you know, you're not high and mighty. Um, You know, who do you think you are? You know, you're not everything you say you are. You're not the best in the world. I'm the best in the world and all this other stuff. Because, you know, Jericho used to have that moniker as well. Um, So, uh, or no, I'm sorry. It was the other way around. Jericho was the heel. Punk was the face. And that's what it was over the best in the world thing is what started it because Jericho wanted a shot at the belt. He's like, I'm going to show you that I'm really the best. Um, so Punk is like, whatever, you know, you want to wrestle, let's wrestle. So Jericho supposedly dug up dirt that uh, CM Punk's dad was an alcoholic. And this is why Punk was straight edge yeah, because he hated it. They got real there for a little while. And they, they pulled the, uh, you, I think you were watching back in the day, Jerry Lawler versus uh, Jake the Snake Roberts. You remember that promo? Like, and they, they uh, Jerry Lawler poured the, the Jack Daniels over uh, Jake Roberts because Jake had was like he had gone to rehab mm-hmm. with the alcohol. Mm-hmm. So it was almost similar, where Punk, um, excuse me, Jericho had Punk on the ground, grabbed a bunch of alcohol, and poured it all over Punk's face. I remember that. I wish I had seen that. Cause... WWE Network nine ninety nine, or free for new subscribers. There you go, Chris. Or free if you got a friend that's just willing to hook you up with their code. Yeah. Aha. Uh-huh. Well, they said they were going to stop that. That's what they said. Yeah. Two or three pay-per-views ago. Yeah. WrestleMania. It was supposed to stop for WrestleMania. Yeah. Well, I'd like to tell you that it hasn't. Yeah. Me. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, we're going to finish up with our picks for Money in the Bank. Even though you feel like this is pointless. Because by the time people listen to this, Money in the Bank will have already happened. Yeah. But I don't give a because not everyone has the network, and still, it's a wrestling podcast. Well, they'll find out on Monday Night Raw. It's, yeah, and when they listen to this show Monday morning, they'll find out whether we were right or wrong. Yeah, that's true. All so, right, let's do it. Read let's the card off. It. Let's go. So the kickoff match, R-Truth versus King Barrett. King all day. Yeah, that, that really sucks because I like Can you see R-Truth? Nothing no. against R-Truth because he's very entertaining. Dude, R-Truth is super entertaining, man. But... I, I, they're not going to bury Wade Barrett over our truth Yeah, no, absolutely not. I would. Our l- truth segment in WWE was when he turned heel against John Morrison. Do you remember that? I wasn't you watching. You have to watch it, dude. Like, they were in a tag match, and they returned from commercial break, and they lost the match. So, Morrison... Um, Johnny Mundo. ...was mad or something. Like, if I remember correctly, he was mad. that, And then they showed footage, because, you know, sometimes they keep the cameras rolling during the commercial mm-hmm. break. During the commercial break... Our truth had to stop because he was winded and he had to go get a bottle of water and refresh himself. So, supposedly John Morrison made a comment about that, like, "Oh, don't worry about it. We'll get him next time. You know, just make sure you're you're, you're feeling better about it." And our truth got mad, like, "What are you trying to say? I can't go and all this stuff." So he beats John Morrison's ass, goes, starts pouring all types of water, pulls out. I don't know if you've ever seen when they ever lift the apron to get the from under the ring. Yeah, there's always like a tray of Gatorade and soda and all that. Yeah, stuff. totally. He's pouring all that on him, dude. He goes, I don't know, I, if you remember if he got in the crowd from his pocket, dude pulls a cigarette out, lights up a cigarette, and just starts smoking in the rings, blowing the smoke in Morrison's face, blowing the smoke in the fans' faces. I was nice. like, that is awesome. That is awesome. That was the start of the little Jimmy. Oh, was it the start of the little Jimmy? I remember the little Jimmy. 
That was the start. Of you it. know, crazy. Speaking of crazy black men, this is completely off subject. Going in the bank, <laughs> but <laughs> I was just watching some old footage of New Jack. Oh. They did an interview with New Jack, and uh, it was one of his one of his last things where he's up on this like 30, 40 feet in the air up on the scaffolding with this guy, and he's supposed to throw this guy down off on a table, and they're stalling because the guy's scared and he doesn't want to do it. Yeah. And you can see them. I mean, they're hooked up, and they're talking. Yeah. And New Jack's just telling him, you know, just one, two, three, man, we're just going to go, we're just going to go. And I think that was the match that ended New Jack's career. Yeah. He was talking about, you know, people think um, I'm crazy because I did all this crazy shit. Which I personally was, I think it's the Evil Ballroom or the Rave up in Milwaukee. I saw two ECW shows there. I was there when he broke his leg, jumping off the bat, like, dude, 25, 30 feet. Up off a balcony under the stone table, broke his leg. It was amazing. ECW was a whole other level. But it was, <laughs> ECW was the <laughs> But he said, he's not crazy. He's like, I was high on cocaine. He was like, I would snort a massive amount of cocaine far without the rain. I thought that was, man, that's great, dude. Just New Jack. It doesn't surprise me at all, man. But uh, back to Money in the Bank. I love New Jack, dude. Love that guy. All right, so I say Barrett over Truth, dude. Yeah, it's going to be Barrett. I mean, like you said, there's no reason to give the truth. Do you even know who they are? Yeah. I mean, I'm not retarded. Well, no, because you don't watch wrestling, so I don't know. Yeah, I've never been around for a minute. Uh, I'm going to go opposite just to be different. I'm going to say truth. Eventually, they're going to have to do something with the guy. Yeah, fire him. Well, yeah, that yeah, Not that's, that I'd like to see him lose his job. Like he's, just, I, he's entertaining. I honestly, they what was that ladder match a couple. Of, was it at, at WrestleMania? Which that one? he was in the ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship. Yeah, I was really hoping they're going to give him the IC title. Dude, did you see Raw? Was it last week when he came out and he's like, "Hey, I got over my fear of heights. I'm in. The, I can be in the match now, or I'm in the match." Kane's like, "Who the hell are you? No, go play." <laughs> All right, sorry, and he just turns around and walks away. <laughs> like, dude, you just don't put yourself in the match. So, the next match on the card, according to this, is the Divas Championship, Nikki Vell versus Paige. Oh, that's such a hard one. It's, it's not a hard one for me because I feel like there's going to be a Nikki Bella dynasty, dude. Like, when Nikki Bella drops that title and leaves, she will be one of the revered Divas champions. Do you think Nikki's going to retain? I think Nikki's going to retain. As much as I would like to see our English... Muffin. Who? R. No, I don't share. Oh, no, you're sharing now. We're soulmates. <laughs> <laughs> By the test you took, not me, you. That's yeah. cool. I still got Sasha Banks. That's all right. You can have her. And you I want, still got uh. You want your English muffin? You know, when you, when you put it that way, it's hard to, like, I don't know. Like, I feel if Paige gets the belt back, it needs to be on a bigger stage than Money in the Bank. But there's still two papers, including Money in the Bank. There's, you still got Battleground before SummerSlam. I don't know, man. I don't know which way to go. Um, I, You know what? I'm going to go with you on this one. I'm going to agree with Nikki Bella. Just because I feel that they're going to hold off on giving it to Paige until it's a bigger stage. Well, they, I feel like they need a, a dominant champion streak to brush AJ Lee's under the carpet. Yeah. And I feel like that's what they're doing. Yeah. yeah I'm going Nikki on this one, too. It's the wise man's choice. Even though we'd, we'd, we'd all probably pick Paige first. <laughs> our hearts want Paige, but our brains know it's going to be Nikki Bella. Next up, the IC Championship. Ryback versus The Big Show. Really? Really? Do we even need to have this? Do we even need to post do picks for this match? You can't just give me looks. you got to be vocal. <laughs> so you know Ryback's going to keep it. Yeah, of course Ryback's going to retain. Because what would be the point of giving Big Show the Intercontinental title at this point in his career? Why would you give... Ryback this huge push and give him a belt just to lose it to Big Show. Yeah. At Money in the Bank. Not happening. So that's Ryback. I don't even care what the f*** you think, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Ryback anyways. Yeah. I don't want WWE Tag Team Champions. This is a great match because it goes back Why to... Why did you say it like that? Because I was going to get all crazy about it. This is one of my favorite matches of all time. What I like to call, I, I lovingly refer to in a completely non-racist way, Black on Black Crime. <laughs> <laughs> no, sure, you can call it that and then call it non racist. The yeah. New Day versus the Primetime Players. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Besides Paige and Sasha Banks. Come on, Thea Trinidad and JoJo. Yeah, All whatever. Right, you can done. keep them. Is that little JoJo from Total Divas? It's not so little anymore. Yeah, whatever. She's like, what, 22? Yeah, I guess she's, she's legal. Junior got to stay away from that jailbait. Take my Thea so you've got the New Day versus the Primetime Players. Uh, I would really like to think that they're going to give us the Darren Young and Tyson O'Neal, give Primetime their 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 spotlight. 
I don't think so. But it doesn't, yeah. I'm going to go with New Day holding the titles because if you want to foreshadow, not that I'm going to go ahead and pick Kofi to win the, the contract, but they're, they're hyping Kofi up to be the man because you heard that promo where they're like, oh, yeah, you know, Kofi wins, we win. you know. So I think it's going to be one of those things where it, if they're going to split New Day up, it starts with Kofi kind of branching out on his own. And the dissension between Big E and Xavier Woods and Kofi is going to split them up, and the prime time players will take advantage of that at some point and become champs. And then that's going to further the, the dissension of New Day. But not tonight. Not tonight. So, I'm going, I'm so going, New Day, day retains. retains. New Day retains. I'm for anybody you would have said besides the primetime players. So, did you see the primetime players uh, promo on SmackDown this week? When, uh, dude, it was so it, it was the way they did it was so awesome. They they came out with the promo and they're you know they're talking to Renee Young, and it's like the primetime players were finally coming out. They we're coming out, and Tyus O'Neill looks at Darren Young. He's like, not the way you came out last year, but we're coming out. <laughs> I was like, wow. Dude, since they've come back as a tag team, they have cut nothing but awesome promos, dude. Their promos have been, like, some of the best coming out of the tag team division. Yeah. Uh, but, they're, unfortunately. They've always been entertaining. Remember Uncle Pancake or whatever his name was? Good stuff. Next up, we got John Cena versus Kevin Owens. Owens all the way. Yeah. Owens all the way. Like, there is no point to building up Kevin Owens. We talked about this last week for him to lose to John Cena. Everybody who's, a, quote, unquote, a monster that's unbeatable or whatever the case, they put him in front of Cena, he falls. Look at how great Rusev's career was. Yeah. Cena put, you know, he put Cena over twice, not that Cena needed it, and now where's Rusev? Out with an ankle injury and beefing with Dolph Ziggler over Lana. Come on, man. It's good for Lana. Yeah. Yeah, very good. So, obviously, Kevin Owens. good for Dolph. Kevin Owens used to wrestle in the independent market as Kevin Steen. Well, Cena never wins any big matches anymore. Just like that Hogan one you were talking about a minute ago. If that actually happened, they'll have Hogan win. Cena doesn't win big matches. Yeah, that, I wouldn't <laughs> be surprised. Owens for the win there. Next match, the Money in the Bank ladder match. Roman Reigns versus Dolph Ziggler versus Sheamus versus Kane versus Kofi Kingston versus Randy Orton versus the man the that gravity. gravity forgot, Neville. That's hard to pick, man, because there's so many stories you can go with that. Okay, based who's, on... Who's the clear, out of all those you just named, who's the clear, uh, well, they're going to give it to this guy? Roman Reigns. That's what I'm thinking. Roman Reigns. He's the, hands down, the guy to give it to. It's not going to be Sheamus anyway, because yeah. Coleman, TMNT. Right, yeah. it won't be Sheamus. It won't be Sheamus. Um, it won't be Kane. It won't be Kane. It won't be Dolph Ziggler. No. So, it won't be Kofi Kingston. You don't think so? Why? Why? That's that's the the first question you have to ask yourself. Why? Yeah. Why give it to Kofi, Kofi Kingston? Giving it to Neville makes more sense than giving it to Kofi Kingston. No, I agree. So okay, so we're in agreement that it's either, it's going to be either between Roman Reigns, Randy Orton, and Neville. Yeah. Which I don't think they're going to give it to Neville because he's too new. I don't think they're going to give it to Orton. I would they say could. either Reigns or Neville. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's going to be Reigns or Orton. But officially, I'm going to say it's Reigns. I think everybody's probably leaning towards that, and I think that's what they think everybody's leaning towards. I mean, if you think about it, though, it probably... I mean, if they gave it to Neville, that'd be awesome. It would but probably I just don't legitimize see Roman Reigns, you know? Like, I was reading... Roman Reigns... But does he really need legitimizing after taking that ass-beating from Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania? Okay, put it this way. It'll legitimize him being in the title picture without okay. being forced into it. That I could agree with. So then you're, you're saying they're going to give it to Roman Reigns? Yeah, I'm going to go with Reigns. Who do you? Who would you like to win? I would say somebody that we didn't expect, like Neville yeah. or Kingston, because we don't. I think Neville would be awesome. You probably don't know who half these guys are. I do. I still say Reigns though. Yeah, it may, he makes the most sense. I would like to see Sheamus win it, but he's got to be in like full TMNT gear. Yeah, <laughs> he's got to come in just as Rockstar. At least he get rid of that <laughs> new look that he's got. I can't stand it. The weird. The braided, braided beard, beard thing. Exactly. Yeah, but did you have six of them? No, I had the <laughs> yeah, one. see? And that moves on to the main event of the night. Heavyweight championship ladder match. Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose. Rollins. Rollins. Yeah, with as much in the past few weeks that they have been pushing Rollins on his own to be like this independent, like, I am a fighting champion. I can do this on my own. He needs to, he needs to beat Ambrose. Yeah, without the outside help. As much as I would love to see them just give Ambrose the belt, it totally then deflates everything that they've done. Yeah. Which is not something I think WWE likes to do. 
And then what happens when Brock comes back? Because Brock's got unexpected, or unfinished business. <clears throat> Not only with Seth Rollins, I guess he, you could say he's got. What do you, would you say he has unex, uh, unfinished business with Roman Reigns? Brock? Yeah. No. So I think he took him to <laughs> Suplex City, and that was enough. that was brutal. That was brutal. That well, was my that, that was the wrestling moment of the year for me. If that Suplex match City. did not give, did not put, make uh, Roman Reigns more legitimate in your eyes, then you just don't know wrestling. Yeah, no, not at all. I hated the Shield when they first came out, but as soon as they all started splitting up, where you could see, you know, each one of them strength. Man, Reigns and Rollins are. Awesome, I, think. I think that Ambrose has become like the dark horse dude of the Shield. I've I've said this many times before. I feel like he is like a new century Roddy Roddy Piper dude. When the Shield first arrived on the scene, he was my least favorite member of the Shield. Yeah. Now that they've broken away, he's probably my favorite, followed by Rollins and then Reigns. You know, I when I because we all knew the split was coming eventually. Yeah. And I always pictured Ambrose being in the role that Rollins is in, as in the company's heel, the top heel. I didn't see him being a face. I saw Rollins being a face, you know. And of course, Reigns was fell in between because yeah. didn't go either or. But honestly, man, like, I hated Ambrose whenever they first came out. I expected him to end up following Dolph Ziggler around saying, "Excuse me." You know? <laughs> I didn't like they've him at all, really. they've created an excellent character with him, and it's something that works for him. You know, as much as I'm getting tired of hearing the lunatic fringe, yeah. I love seeing him show up. I like the fact that he's got the title too. Well, Rollins took it back this week, didn't he? No, Thought it was he, he gave it to him, but it was it was fake. Gotcha. Or so he said. Oh, it's one of the toys. Yeah. But uh, that pretty much does it for this week's. No, it doesn't. No. When I was watching NXT this week. I finally saw who the hell Blue Pants is. Oh, finally. Yeah, she fought. Finally Emma. saw Blue Pants, huh? Saw, why is she dressing like Shadow Cat or Kitty Pride? I don't know. She looks like her. She dresses like Blue Pants. I don't get it. Oh, yeah. you know what? That's not it. I'm going to try and do this really quick because we've already run 10 minutes over longer than I like to go. But my reasons for TNA sucking. Oh, yeah. You promised. Okay. This I, I promised this last week. week and I meant to like devote a good portion of the show to it. But there was way more stuff that happened of more importance than me talking about how I hate TNA. Okay, first of all, it is not lack of talent. They have good talent. Uh, Kurt Angles, obviously the workhorse of that company and the the uh, your respective uh, veteran. Mm. Uh, the EC3, I love that guy. Um, they've, they've got good teams. They've got good talent. I feel like they're doing like old WWE shtick from like 20 years ago. Mm. Like in the way that they cut promos in the way that they do things, like with the Mickey James and the James. So they do, like, very corny stuff. But at the same time, they're, like, trying to make it more adult-oriented. I think that they need to embrace the fact that they aren't a big fish like WWE, try and take more of a NXT Ring of Honor approach to it, and I think it would pay them off better. But after all these weeks of saying it's, it sucked, I did admit to you before we recorded that I finally was slightly interested in some of the things that were going on there. And then you missed the follow-up. And then I missed it because I, I <laughs> took it off my DVR schedule. So it is what it is. Ring of Honor, still awesome. Love Ring of Honor. Steve Carino. Lucha Underground. Lucha Underground. It's the shiz. It's the, dude, those are the best two wrestling shows on. If you want, like, a nice throwback to ECW, Ring of Honor. If you want solid, like, just awesome wrestling, Lucha Underground, hands down. Hands down, man. Killing it. They actually, I think, have a pay-per-view coming up. Mm-hmm. But I'm not sure where it's going to be. Or... Yeah. Really? Yeah. I'm not sure if they're actually going to go the pay-per-view route or if it's just going to be like a, an extra okay. special on TV. Uh, if they were smart, they would just do TV, obviously. Yeah. I don't think their following is... No I don't think they're big enough to make money off a pay-per-view. No. no. And that's only, and it's not because they're not good. I think it's just El Rey is not like a and network that's everywhere. Yeah. Robert Rodriguez, man. Guy's a pimp. He's a director. Sin City, Planet yeah. Terror, did the Spy Kids movies, which I never saw any of those. <laughs> that's, I think, yeah, that's hey, what. Antonio Banderas. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what most people like identify him with is doing the Spy Kids movies that don't know about like his other stuff. Yeah. Desperado. Got Don't forget to sign a petition. Change.org. CM Punk versus JDF. Link below the description for this episode. Yep. 
And then we'll be back next year to talk about uh, next year. Next year. Yeah, we'll be back next year. We're taking the rest of the year off, so f*** y'all. Uh, we'll be back next week with more crap. More crap. More TNA sucking. <laughs> if I ever get to see this last week's impact. Oh, I think there's a big, big Ring of Honor pay-per-view going to happen. I got to figure out how to see that. Well, uh, Best uh, in the world. We'll, we'll know, obviously, next week what if our results and our picture right from mm-hmm. the bank. I think we're, we're spot on, dude. I don't think there's going to be anything we picked wrong this time. Really? I think it's going to be one of those unprecedented times where our picks are going to just completely align with, with the company line. Our truth wins, I'm going to phone in when you're... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if our truth wins, we will call you next weekend. We're like, all right, you, need to, you, you just need to come host the show. We'll just sit down. So yeah. click the link below for the petition, below the description for this episode. Email questions, comments, feedbacks. Junior Comics Remix, Remix Brian Comics Remixed. Alex Comics Remixed. Obviously, there's a dot com at the end of that. Facebook, YouTube. You know the score. Twitter. Twitter. At, at Comics Remix at the Spinner Rack. Word. We'll see you next week. Deuce. Oh, thanks to Bookout for sitting out in the sun, even though I know all I'd say. You still contributed more than Johnny Freeze did 80% of the time. Peace.